Lou Grant, I think, was interesting for two reasons. One, the metamorphosis that, that occurred from, from, from the time Ed was the sort of drunken uh, manager of, not drunken, drinking, heavy drinking manager drinking. And, and a fallible manager of a, of a silly station in Minneapolis to the editor, managing editor, whatever he was called, of, of a serious newspaper in Los Angeles. I, I think the fact that, that they could all pull it off, and I'm talking now about Ed, obviously, and the, what the character brought, and, and Jim and Alan and, and uh, Gene Reynolds, who was with it for its whole run. Um, I think that was as neat a trick as has been turned in television, I think, to, to, to get away with that. And we almost didn't get away with it. In the middle of the first season, CBS really wanted us to make some changes, the nature of which I forget. But that was another time when I had the fun of, you know, of sort of going to war briefly with them and saying, you know, these are the best guys in television. What do you mean you, you want to tell them how to make a show? It had four years, I think, and, and, and it, again, wasn't a top ten show, but it was very solid, and this was the second thing that I meant to say about it. I think it's the only dramatic show that ever, that I can think of, that succeeded in a, in a media setting. Uh, there are lots of comedies, Mary and KRP and Murphy Brown and what, you can think of an awful lot of them, but when you think of dramatic shows like Capital News that Steve and Bochco did, or um, um, there's another one that I'm forgetting. I can't think of a single dramatic show that ever worked. And the reason that they don't work, I think, is because they're not the franchises that the audience will buy in dramatic shows, you know, the action franchises, Law and Order, Police. Because uh, it's uh, not life and death. Lawyer, isn't it? not life and death, exactly, or uh, hospital. And, and, uh, and in Ed's case, it was particularly uh, in, an incredible feat because we couldn't get him out of the office. We couldn't credibly get him into the action. He was, he was a desk uh, man. He, 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 yeah, he was a step away. He was, a, he was secondhand. And, um, and yet, at that show, almost every week, dealt with an issue. And, and they were topical, important issues. Uh, that, because Jim and Alan and Gene are very, you know, they're good, interested citizens, and they didn't want to do a show about nothing. And, uh, and a lot of things worked against it succeeding, but it did. And I think what happened, and I've said this before, so it's not, not a, no revelation, that, that Bill Paley did participate in the scheduling meetings. Now, I, I could be wrong. Maybe Frank Stanton did this. I don't know. But somebody with the power to do it, I think, when, when the time came to renew it for the fifth season, they talked about all the mail they got because Ed Asner, away from the studio, was a very outspoken guy about a number of causes, some local and some domestic and, I mean, national and some international. He, he, was, a, he was an activist. And, a liberal and, activist. A liberal activist. And, and, the, and we got a, our share of mail, and I'm sure CBS got a lot more. And I think Paley just got tired of it because some of it rubbed off on CBS. And, and so the show was somewhat marginal. And uh, that he said, you know, let's get it out of there.